I was gonna, let me finish on a funny note about COVID. So I've been doing a lot of studying, as I do, for my sins, and I've been looking at <laughs> COVID in animals. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically COVID in animals, so I, ju I just wanted to give you all the information, in case you didn't know, about COVID in animals. You remember they said, there, there was an outbreak in Wuhan, and it came from an animal, from a marketplace, to a human being, uh, the, the virus, the microbe, and then it spread to the whole world, yeah? Spread to the whole world. And we were supposed to keep two meters apart because the virus spreads via droplets, which can spread two yes. meters. Two if, meters it, if it's more than two meters, in fact, one meter was the official uh, WHO. But the, um, the British said two to be sure. Yeah? So it would spread, and the inside building, inside of a building, two meters, and that would be, and they had markers well, everywhere the plane, on the road. Markers fine. everywhere on the road. Now let me tell you a few stories about about the um, the animals that uh, that they that, that they've investigated. And what I didn't know was this: we all know it's supposed to come from bats, right? Mm -hmm. It's all supposed to come from bats. Okay. Now what we didn't know, and I didn't know till this week. When I did look into the scientific, the scientific literature, <laughs> I looked into the scientific literature. I like that you're laughing at that. Scientific. Even if even even if you weren't laughing because of what I said, it's still good enough. You can. I'll give you a cue, you're laugh, and you can laugh at the right moment. So, what was discovered was that the. Um, in, no, not yet. In 2003, you remember there was a SARS outbreak, right? SARS, yes. Severe SARS Acute Respiratory SARS Syndrome. SARS so SARS, they said, came from bats. But until 2003, no coronaviruses had been identified in bats. None. After 2003, an intensive search began. The scientists went to the caves. Go to the caves. Find the viruses. <laughs> they ran to the caves and they stuck they captured bats and they, once they got the bats down, they pinned them down and they stuck a little thing in their nose and just to be sure, they stuck one up their anus. Animal abuse, where's Peter? They didn't sniff it, they took it back and they put it in some liquid and then they put it in a PCR test, cycled it 45 times. They found 200, 200 coronaviruses in bats between 2003 and 2020. They did not know of any coronaviruses in bats before 2003. I was a standard, I thought they knew. Then I found out in birds, they knew about coronaviruses in turkeys, in ducks, and in uh, quails, I think it is. <laughs> After 2003, they went round collecting droppings, bird poo from pigeons, from uh, 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 every duck in the world, from all the birds they could, sparrows. And then they detected more and more coronaviruses in birds. Now you might think that, okay, coronavirus officially, they come from birds and bats. That's what the story is. Then they found in 2008, they found a whale, a beluga whale. <laughs> And they looked at the whale, it was dead. They chopped him up, they took out its liver, they placed the liver on a microscope, they took samples from the liver, put in a PCR test, lo and behold, they found a coronavirus in a whale. Then they found coronavirus in a long-tailed, uh, a, a long tail, a long-nosed uh, dolphin. So coronaviruses that come from birds, or from bats are found in whales. So watch out when you go to Safari Park and the whale is jumping around and goes Boof! and shoots that liquid into the air. More than two meters to be sure. Then they found in the in the, in Prague. Sorry, let me go into apes. What they found was that the great apes, none of them are hosts of coronaviruses. Or so they thought. Because after all, if man gets coronaviruses and apes don't, then there's some missing link. And that must be filled in by some other animal. 
that's an intermediary between the bat and the man or the bird and the man. That was the theory. So then they went to uh, Cote d'Ivoire in 2016 and uh, there's, a, there's a chimpanzee reserve. So the German virologist Christian Drosten, who made the first PCR test for SARS and SARS-CoV-2, he went out there to Cote d'Ivoire to the chimpanzee reserve and there he noticed along with other a team of 15 scientists went to Cote d'Ivoire into five days quarantine before they go inside so they don't pass anything to the chimpanzees and then they noticed that in the morning some of the chimpanzees were coughing <laughs> some chimpanzees were coughing in the morning for about four or five days so what did they do they ran out after the chimpanzees and picked up their shit <laughs> they put their shit in a bottle and mixed it with a bit of water then they did a PCR test and they found lo and behold chimpanzees can catch OC43 Russian flu coronavirus okay. right? from 1892 so now we knew chimpanzees can catch coronaviruses okay. Now we move on to the really dangerous ones. Oh, go on. So they went to the zoo in Prague and they found, and, and they found in the zoo in Prague in 2021, the 21st to the 23rd of February, they investigated why two Malayan and one Sumatran tiger have got a cough. Symptoms, growling and wheezing. <laughs> And a runny nose, and a runny nose. So they ran up to these tigers and uh, Malayan and Sumatran tigers, and they did a PCR test on the Malayan tiger and the Sumatran tiger. Bing, positive for COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2. They then observed the gorillas. The gorilla was tired, wasn't eating its food. Definitely a symptom of COVID-19. So they ran up to the gorilla. They didn't want to get too close. So they picked up his poo, gorilla poo, and they put it in a bottle, put some water in it, shook it up a little bit, did a PCR test, bang! Gorillas in Prague have got coronavirus. May I ask you a question? One second, just one more. Not to finish the story. The lions were also tired and coughing and had runny noses. They tested their poo. Bing, COVID-19. Luckily, I don't know how, the scientists they are. survived. The, scientists. the lions survived. The tigers survived. No hospitalizations. And, and the gorillas survived. Now, the scientists. however, the next lions. thing was, this was a little bit earlier actually, this one, right at the beginning of the pandemic in the Bronx in New York 27th of March one Amur tiger was tested their poo was tested for COVID-19 for SARS-CoV-2 positive it was asymptomatic <laughs> asymptomatic but another tiger had a cough and a runny nose so two in fact two tigers two tigers symptomatic one asymptomatic and then they asked themselves how did these tigers get infected they said well it must come from the keepers but the keepers didn't have anything wrong with them they tested them for the past they tested past samples from the keepers and they found they were asymptomatic they had passed on SARS-CoV-2 asymptomatically to the tigers and lions in the in the Bronx Zoo. Is this the original source? This is the original source. I can quote you this. It's called <laughs> Nazi <laughs> Alexander reverse zoo, reverse oh, zoonotic no. transmission, a SARS-CoV-2 lineage alpha no. in great apes. And the other one is a Springer uh, Flag oh, article. Is that the first asymptomatic case? Though? Well, the funny thing is, the chimpanzees were also asymptomatic transmission. So, Rost and Co were pushing asymptomatic from man to animal quite early on. Now, here is the animal, this is 2020. 
Here is the tiger in the, the Bronx Zoo. Uh, it has hand sanitizer, <laughs> just in case. And here is the next creature, the hippopotamus. <laughs> Now the hippopotamus was found in uh, the hippopotamus was found to be carrying SARS-CoV-2 in Antwerp in 2021. Nobody knew how the hippopotamus got infected with SARS-CoV-2 because they were socially distanced all along. There was a barrier of two and a half meters between man and the hippo. So nobody knows how the hippos caught SARS-CoV-2, but they had runny noses. Hippos <laughs> spend most of their time in the water, but they did notice they had a bit of snotty nose. So they, there were two hippos. One was 41 years of age, another 14 years of age. They ran up to the hippos and they took samples from their poo and samples from their nose. The hippos were obliging. They did this socially distanced though. So they had a long stick to put it in their nose to collect some snots. They tested it, bing, positive for SARS-CoV-2. Luckily for us, the hippos recovered within a few days. But then, then the worst thing happened. In Vietnam, in December 2021, one hippo in a zoo in Hanoi was tested for SARS-CoV-2 after not eating its food. They found, bing, the hippo had got SARS-CoV-2. COVID-19 with a runny nose and it was tired. That hippo died. Two hippos were mildly symptomatic in Antwerp. One hippo died in Vietnam. Case fatality rate, 33% amongst hippos. 33% of hippos die from COVID-19 if they catch it. Then they found that white-tailed deer in the United States of America, in North America and South America, in the United States alone, there were 25 million white-tailed deer. That's like Bambi, yeah, it's like Bambi. They tested white-tailed deer in Iowa, hundreds of them and they found wild white-tailed deer have got 10 different types of SARS-CoV-2 in their bloodstream and in their, they found they had runny nose. They tested their runny nose, they tested their poo, being positive for SARS-CoV-2. Now the interesting thing was this, in September 2020, 5% of deer in Iowa had SARS-CoV-2 positive. In December 2020, 80% were SARS-CoV-2 positive. In January 2021, 100% of white-tailed deer in Iowa who were tested, tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. So they speculated that somehow these animals had come too close to humans. Someone had blown their nose, thrown their, their tissue paper on the floor, and someone went off and, and the, and the the deer went off and sniffed it or ate it. Somehow they caught this virus from human beings on 10 separate occasions that we know of. I put it to them in my latest scientific analysis of their research. I put it to them, I have an alternative <laughs> hypothesis as to how the white-tailed deer of America became generally infected with SARS-CoV-2. They forgot that between 80% infected in December and 100% infected in January, lots of people sing Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer and they do so wandering around the streets. And as they do so, their spit and aerosol flew into the air. And in some places, they ride around with a, a cart pulled by white-tailed deer. And in that way, Bambi was infected and all of America's white-tailed, 25 million white-tailed deer became infected. One final story. More plausible than the efficient. More plausible than the efficient. One final story is, in Holland, 4.5 million mink were being raised in farms to have their skin 
chopped off them and to wear in, in, in you know to put to sell in coats in Harrods. And uh, these mink farms are like Alcatraz. They are very, very tight security around them. You can't allow foxes and cats flying in there and killing them. And you can't allow infection with various things because they're like, sitting there in cages, all of them become infected quite quickly. And so they found, unfortunately, that out of 126 farms in Holland, 60, I believe it was, were infected with SARS-CoV-2. They could not find a human connection. And so then they asked, well, if they're not come from humans, how did these mink become infected? And so they did an investigation into how, whether and there's anywhere in the cages in these farms where some other animal could have come in. And let's say, picked some SARS-CoV-2 off his beard, flown in quickly within 30 minutes and dropped it on the mink. And what they found was that it was extremely difficult to break in, to break in to the, to the cages for any animal, extremely difficult. It's like breaking into Alcatraz and breaking out again. Yeah? Extremely difficult. But nevertheless, that is the primary conclusion that was drawn by various scientists in Holland investigating this. And they all got funding. They all, Aye, they all got funding. Not only did they get funding, but they all demand. You can read one after another of what they demand. And they say, we need to be very careful. And we need not to stop doing this, but instead to escalate it. Every type of animal on earth should be tested. Not only for SARS-CoV-2, but for every other possible microbe and virus that might affect human beings. Because in that way, only in that way, can we stop the next pandemic. That is what they say. That is what the science says. And no wonder when they were getting money for picking up that mink poo and sticking it in a jar. No wonder when they were getting money for chasing lions round and picking up their poo. No wonder when they were getting money for chasing deer round in Iowa and collecting their poo. If you're getting 30,000 pounds every couple of months for doing that. Well then, who doesn't want to do a job like that? Anyway, enough for that. That was just a bit of entertainment. Well done. Fantastic. Good piece. Well done. Well done. Well done.